What the fuck? Hello everybody out there in YouTube land, Noodle here, and uh, today we are going to be playing Belladonna. Oh my god, uh, this is like the fourth time I'm trying to start this game, and I think this is a fresh load that I put on here, um, or I guess a fresh download. Um, I tried to remote download things from my phone while I was at work uh, to my computer, and uh, I think maybe it corrupted something or something, but I'm going to try it, and I'm going to give it a one-time shot. I'll know from the very get-go if it's going to freeze up on me. Hopefully it doesn't because I really want to play this game. It's sort of an adventure point point-and-click kind of game. Uh, you can find it on Steam. So here we go. Come on. Fingers crossed. I hope I just needed a fresh download. Like something happened while I was trying to download while I wasn't here or something. At this point it freezes. Oh, thank God. It pushed past it. Wonderful. Let's hope this gravy train keeps going. What the fuck? Oh, the physical sensation. Pain? I'm alive? That's odd. I don't feel alive. What's going on? I have no memories of anything before this point in time. My mind is tabula rasa. Yeah. I have a language. I seem to be in some laboratory of sorts. Maybe I can find out what happened if I look around. Okay. Um, quick observation. If I had to bone anything that was undead, I wouldn't mind boning Belladonna. Let's check out the stretcher. My very first memory is waking up on this thing. Before that, nothing. Mm. I wonder what I am. I don't know. Iron Maiden. A torture device turned into a strange machine. What kind of place is this? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Let's look around some more. A bookshelf. Books. A lot of natural philosophy and chemistry. Something by an M. W. Shelley. Oh, <laughs> Frankenstein. By the way, switch. Now look is at not that. the time. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's look at the sparkly note. Journal There's page. a handwritten note here. Maybe it can shed some light on my situation. I'm very well versed for somebody who's dead. Wolfram von Trauserschlofloss. It is with shaking hands and heavy heartbeats. I gather before me the instruments of my last desperate attempts. I find myself on the threshold of my toils, a turning point. For should I fail tonight, I doubt I shall find the strength and resolve to continue. At my feet now lies the lifeless remains of my beautiful Belladonna. A few hours ago my wife was alive and well, and now she's been cut open, dissected, altered, and artificially reconstructed. From the second she gave up her final breath, I have worked tirelessly to preserve and prepare her corpse, that I might infuse a spark of being back into her lifeless limbs. This is the final test of all my research and experimentation the past five years, the complete revivification of human being body and soul. The anxiety I feel is agonizing, but I cannot let it hinder me from carrying out what I must do for my own sake and hers. This procedure must not fail. In my favorite dream, my wife appears as such a lovely creature, so far removed from this creation before me. Her cheeks, once so full of laughter, are now pale, almost to the point of transparency, with the skin stretched so thin over the cranium it threatens to rip at any moment. That's one hell of a brown sentence. Her eyes would shine like the night sky, but are now empty, watery, and yellowish. I have to cling to my conviction that she will regain her formal grace and, vi and vitality once she's brought back to the realm of the living. Her eyes will light up with the flame of life, a Promethean flame stolen from the very gods. From this night on, man shall be the master of his own destiny, and God shall no longer be above us. As I write, the engines of life are finally heating up, the last of the preparations coming into order. The crucial moment is ever approaching. The time has come. Dot, dot, dot. Success! The attempt was a success. She's alive! Okay. Tools. There's a screwdriver in this toolbox. Better take it. Exactly. Now we have a screwdriver. That won't work. Ah, uh, okay. I was trying to, like, look at it, but that's fine. Skull! A human skull or a paperweight. Hmm. 
I'll call it Yurik. Ooh, Yurik. A human skull. File of oil. This oil looks expensive. Let's waste it. Sweet. Uh, magnet. I love magnets. No, I like magnets too. Uh, galvanic experiment. It looks like the legs of a frog hooked up with wires. And I'm pretty sure it moves when I'm not watching. Ew. Uh, anything else here we can take? Drawers tank. I have no idea what's inside of this, but it glows. Hmm. Looks very pretty. Brain in a jar. It's a brain in a jar. I wonder what it's thinking. It's mm. a brain in a jar. Alright, uh, gargoyle. That is one ugly gargoyle. You shouldn't Looks say like that, a but. George to me. Hmm. Okay, George. That is one ugly gargoyle. Looks oh, like there's a like a, a hacksaw or something down here. Bone Ooh, saw. Surgical tools. Shiny. Okay. Uh, so we have a magnet, a bone saw, a file of oil, and a screwdriver. Uh, so far, none of this means anything to me. Um, let's move on, shall we? The door won't budge. It seems to be barred from the other side. I might mm. be able to unscrew these hinges, though. Oh, you mean with the screwdriver? The screws on these hinges are rusty and stuck. I need some lubricant to loosen them up. You mean like this file of oil? I some oil on the rusty screws. Thank that you. should loosen them up. Ooh. And then go ahead and, uh, oh, sorry, get the screwdriver. I'm free. Wonderful. Let's go. Uh, look, suit of armor. What a dedicated night to guard a damp dungeon like this. Hmm, indeed. Maybe he was demoted. Oh. Maybe he likes the dark. Hmm. Maybe he's secretly a poet. I bet his name is Roland. I like how she names everything. Sounds like me. Journal page. Another piece of paper. This was written long before the last one. Work is going great. Kept the rat alive for one hour and 26 minutes last night. Will it mo uh, we'll move on to larger mammals within the week. I find my life more and more polarized into two faces. I remember times when I used to climb up and down the stairs like a squirrel each day, but now I spend most of my time and indeed most of my thoughts down here in my laboratory, only to step upstairs at night to sleep. It's warmer upstairs in the living area, but it's boring and understimulating. Down here is where I make progress. Down here is what matters, and I lay awake beside my sleeping wife. I often wish I was down here with my experiments. Belladonna grows increasingly distant ever since that fateful night when our baby Lucas gave up his last breath. She lost all traces of her old self. God knows what she's thinking about as she silently gazes into the empty air or restlessly paces back and forth on the great hall. I, at least, am working with my grief. I've turned my attention to the science of life and death and yawning. And not a day goes by when I do not think of how my son was ultimately taken from me. Sorry, I'm like yawning. It's um, like 2.30 in the morning and I've been up for like 18 hours straight. Um, so it's ultimately taken from me. This is my thought that drives me in this, the greatest of ambitions. My own son will never return. I have accepted that now, but thanks to me and my work with work, the cold, ruthless contrast between living and dead will be in the future be much softer, maybe even completely erased. My wife, though, has let her grief devour her whole. She is emotionally and intellectually paralyzed, it seems to me. All her creativity and quickness of thought, the witness of her speech, and the nimble way she used to jump from one conclusion to the next, all those qualities that made me fall in love with her in the first place, they've all been snuffed out like the flame of a candle. This makes me wonder even more why I bother to go up to her bed every night. The shell in which she's encased herself cannot be breached by anything I say or do. It's almost as though she's involved with some other, someone other than me. I feel ridiculous for even writing it down. No! It seems ludicrous to think that Belladonna's disinterest in me is due to her seeing another man. I would not accuse her of that. It's just one of the many strange ideas that seem to appear in my head when I'm down here by myself. I'm probably just tired. I better try and get some sleep as soon as this rat's heart stops beating. Hmm. Now it seems like we got eight journals and then like some other stuff to collect. Close. Alright, uh, what else is here? Great, uh, bed. A stick, too. It looks like someone has been sleeping quite a lot in this sorry excuse for a bed, and it was hardly the suit of armor. Hardly. But why would someone choose to sleep down here? Stick! There's a long stick here. Perhaps it was used to try to chase away rats when trying to sleep. Perhaps. Oh, good, we got the stick. Uh, can I attach the stick with the magnet? Look, I can attach the magnet to the end of this stick. Great! Wonderful. Now I can get things. Alright, uh, look, another journal page. More writings from the lonely doctor. 
Curse my miserable existence, the hopelessness from which I see no conceivable escape. I cannot rid myself of the feeling that there's something of the utmost importance that I need to take care of, but it is not... But it is not yet time. That something beyond my control needs to be completed first. I carry inside me a sensation of waiting, yet I cannot name the thing I'm waiting for. <sighs> Jesus, all this reading. In the meantime, all I can do is work. I do make progress, but I'm an excruciatingly slow rate, and nothing I accomplish seems to calm the anxiety in my head. I sleep only for a few hours every night, and I cannot remember the last hot meal. I am feverishly and jump at the smallest of sounds. What is it that I'm missing? I'm spending more and more time down here with my research. I only occasionally go upstairs to sleep in the master bedroom. Most nights I sleep, if at all, in the makeshift bunk I've constructed in the cellar. It is not as comfortable, but my research is at the point where it oftentimes requires my constant attention, and comfort is not my priority. I'm certain I'm advancing even closer to a significant breakthrough, but it is as though I'm powerless to control or even affect the rate of its occurrence. And on top of this, I cannot rid my mind of the idea that Belladonna has forgotten me and taken up a new lover. A new man in her life, someone more lively than me, perhaps? Someone who can still look at life with joy and optimism to match her own by grave tragedy unaffected humor. Yet who would that be? I couldn't remember friends we used to have. In my memory, our wedding was a crowd and festive event, but it had been years since this castle has seen any visitors. I have no time for social obligations, and Belladonna seems to have given up on everything that is pleasant in life. I suspect the castle is in an undesirable condition as well. Almost all of the staff has left us. We are down to one girl who dusts the cupboards and lights the fireplaces, but I do not see much of her either these days. For all I know, she might well be gone. There cannot possibly be a man in Belladonna's life apart from me. Ooh, maybe she went lesbian. Oh my god, what if you're the girl who was dusting the cabinets and he was trying to make himself a new wife? Ooh. Exit. Another locked door. Oh. Let's take a peek through. Oh, here we go. Magnet on a stick. Get the key. Let's hope this works. Aha. Aha. Just as planned. Wonderful. I got the basement key. Great. Can we get out? Let's unlock this door. Yes, please. Let's unlock this. Oh, I actually have to do it? Okay, sorry. Great, another note. More letters. Has he figured it out yet? Probably. <sighs> I'm sorry I'm yawning so much. All this reading is getting to me. Um, and these games are, like, not very action-y, so they're not very, like, adrenaline pounding. Um... But I am liking the art style so far, and the story seems to be pretty straightforward. Uh, I see now that my suspicions have been well-grounded, albeit aimed at the wrong direction. Belladonna is not seeing another man. She's seeing a woman. I'm convinced that she must, that must be that maid, Claire, whatever her name might be. She and Belladonna are up to something, I'm sure of it. And to think of all the hours I'm stuck down here, caught up in my dreadful work, leaving them free to roam and left to their own devices upstairs. Of course, they found each other, only living things in the whole castle besides me and my work, and my week-long rabbits. They've all figured it out. When I come up at night, they act all innocent, keeping the mutual secret from me as a playful game. But as soon as I descend to the laboratory, they are in each other's arms again. But what can I do? The progression of events will be on my control, just like my work. I slave away in my ghoulish endeavor, making progress every hour, but never getting anywhere, and simultaneously Belladama is slipping away from me further and further for every night, yet nothing ever changes. Should I confront them? Storm up there, hoping to catch the two of them in the act? Take back the life that was mine, the wife that was mine? No. I have no reason for silly suspicions, no evidence whatsoever, and merely a thought stuck in my brain refusing to leave. So I remain passive as always, and each new day is one more where I am unable to make an action, unable to change my wretched situation. Wow, this guy is like going fucking crazy. I don't know why. I don't know why. But this bend in the back is kind of hot. I don't know why. And I'm always partial with girls with short hair, especially like bald. If like... You can rock a bald head and look sexy doing it, like, by all means. A cogwheels. couple of cogwheels on the floor. They must have fallen off the mechanism when the door slammed shut. I wonder if I can put them back. Probably. Uh, it looks like there's strange inscriptions here. There are some minuscule inscriptions on the wall here. Okay, one line, two square, three triangle? Oh! One line, two... Square three triangle. Is there anything else here? No? Okay, uh. 
Not yet. Two square. It doesn't fit. Two square, three triangle. Oh, okay. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I was like overcomplicating it. Oh man, this place looks fancy. Candlestick. A big and heavy candlestick. It looks like there used to be two of them. Hmm, mortar it's and pestle. It's a mortar. And a pestle, too. They seem to belong here, but I'll remember where they are in case I need them another time. Oh, that's pretty good. Fireplace. It's warm. I haven't realized until now just how cold my body is. Well, you're dead, honey. Portrait. The label says Dr. Wolfram von Trauerschloss. So this is the man who brings the dead back to life. He looks as though he would have been handsome once. Oh, he's not handsome now. Uh, look at these candlesticks. Really good looking. The general page. The doctor is losing it. He's just scribbling down nonsense by now. What will he do if he ever acts on his wild suspicions? I really like her eyes. It's clear to me what I must do. I'm now convinced beyond any reasonable doubt that my wife is unfaithful. They still hide it very well, her and that housemaid, but the logical mind tells me there's no other explanation. For countless hours I have pondered the situation. The more I think about it, the more certain I become that my judgment is correct. These countless hours are hours I could have spent thinking about my work. It's clear to me that I will never be able to fully concentrate on the puzzles at hand as long as my thoughts keep creeping back to my wife and her new lover. This is the very reason that my research is progressing at such an agonizingly so place. It is so clear to me what I must do. Belladonna herself is a person who I want back in my life, so I cannot punish her. That leaves her lover, the young maid. She is unimportant, and it is she that must go. I could fire her, throw her out of the household, but I fear that that would not resolve anything. The two of them would still know each other, and they could write secret forbidden love letters and meet up at secluded rendezvous. No, it's clear to me what I must do. I must get rid of the maid for good. A plan is already taking form in my head. In the greenhouse out back, I keep a lot of plants and herbs. One of the specimens I have is called Deadly Nightshade, an interesting plant with many medicinal uses, but its renown comes from the fact that its extract is lethal, is lethal already at small doses. And uh, a point to note, Deadly Nightshade is a group of plants. It's not just one. It's like a, it's like a cluster of plants, like, a, like a, a species of plants. And the tomato is actually part of the Deadly Nightshade family. In fact, I think the common like red tomato, you can't eat its leaves because the leaves are poisonous or they're toxic. But you can eat the tomato or the fruit and it's just fine. A lot of medieval people back in the Middle Ages used to um, have nothing to do with tomatoes and they wouldn't eat them at all because they didn't know how to eat them. I guess people would like eat the leaves too and they would die so they thought the whole plant was poisonous. It wasn't until later they realized the tomato wasn't poisonous at all. That The fruit itself wasn't poisonous but the leaves and stem probably are. There we go. Knowledge headed your way. Preparing a powder from this poisonous plant is not all problematic. Getting the victim to ingest the dose will be a challenge, but I suspect I have ample opportunity. They're not aware I know the truth and thus suspect nothing. The maid will fall ill, and with a short time she will die of seemingly natural causes. No one will be the wiser concerning the true circumstances of her demise. Deadly Nightshade is merely the common name for this plant. Its scientific name is Atropa Belladonna. The symmetry strikes me as beautiful. The poor girl strayed too close to the Belladonna, and that would be the death of her. Poetic. Poetic. Um, journal page over here. Another one. We're clicking these the things pretty quick. so sad. I don't even know if I want to read this one. I'll read it. After I have a Girl Scout cookie. You guys are just going to have to wait. Mmm. Yummy. Mmm. Thin mints. Probably my favorite Girl Scout cookie. Alright. Mmm. Sorry. <laughs> my wife took the wafer maid's death harder than I expected. Further confirming my suspicions that they were indeed having a secretive love affair. She is passionate and irrational, raging all day and crying all night. Well, a few months ago, the cold, shroud, the cold shroud of silence lay over our house. Now there's the wailing shrieks of Bedlam. One should think that she would be used to dealing with the grief of lost loved ones by now. Wow, that's fucking harsh. However, in all sincerity, I don't believe she was ever as affected by the death of our only son as I was. I also suspect that she might have guessed I had something to do with her lover's demise. If she wouldn't talk to me before, she, now she yells and barks at every moment. 
I hardly leave my laboratory these days, and even I have a small bed down here where I sleep a few hours when I'm not working. All the while, she prowls around upstairs like a hungry tiger and attacks me over futile nitpicks as soon as I poke my head out. What happened to the love we shared when we married? We were going to live together in an inherited castle. We were going to have children together. Now all I get is abuse and a cold bed in the basement. All I want is for things to go back to the way they were before all this. Well, man, you shouldn't fucking kill her lover. Bowl. A beautiful china bowl. It looks hand-painted. Take it. Urn. The name on the plaque is Lucas von Trauerschloss. This must be the ashes of Wolfram's son. Ooh. Let's take a bowlful. I don't know why I thought that would work. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh, let's exit. A dead body. Dun dun dun. It's the body of Dr. Von Trauerschloss. He's dead. And what's more, he's been murdered. Oh, there's but a candlestick. Who could have done this? Look, there's a note. There must be some clues around. Okay, uh, let's look at the candlestick. The missing candlestick. And it seems to be the murder weapon. Oh, now I have the murder weapon. Mm, body. The body is still warm. He cannot have been dead for much longer than I have been alive. Did he mm. have to die for me to live? Mm, journal There's page. a letter clutched in his hand. His final words are a clue left by the killer. Well, this is a lot of final words. Over the course of a sleep this night, I have thought through my next course of action from every possible angle, for it is indeed time for me to take action again. Even with the troubles made out of the way, I see little chance of getting my old Belladonna back. If anything, she's worse now than ever before. But I have an idea, one that kept me awake all night. I've come very far in my research now. I can fairly predictably create living creatures that are stable enough not spontaneously die again. This has consisted through my many different species of animals. I've noticed something peculiar, though. Their return creation seems strangely vacant and sluggish, as if, although the body is brought back to life, the soul is forever lost. The creation is perfectly functional in response to stimuli, just as if it was truly alive, but the mysterious spark of will seems to be missing. I know no other way to describe the phenomenon. This bothered me before, but now I cannot help to think what this might suit my needs. Isn't it precisely the strong will of my wife that is causing all my problems? There's no need to be poetic with flowers this time. I'm in no short supply of lethal substances in the laboratory, and poison suits my needs well as it leaves no physical trauma to the body. I would still need to make incisions in the corpse to replace internal organs with clockwork parts, but stitching together surgical cuts is much simpler than trying to repair unhealed bodily damage. The integrity of her visage is a priority. To extinguish Belladonna's current life and give her a new one, to bring her body and mind back, minus soul and free will, a beautiful, obedient automaton. Or uh, automation. A mechanical doll with all the functionality of a woman, but who is responsive and does what she's told. That, that, my dear future reader, would be truly something. I think it's high time I tried my revivification process on a human subject. Ooh. Uh, to the backyard, to the living room, to the study. Grandfather clock. Let's look at that. Gargoyles. Lots of gargoyles to look at. It's an old clock. Tick tock. Tick tock. Okay. Gargoyles. Oh, is she gonna come all the way down the stairs? Oh, look, there's another page. Those are a lot of gargoyles. Lupold, Brunhilde, Arthur, Maya, Lena, Ismaldor, Ether, and Yosef. In that order. Hmm. This letter is signed Belladonna. I've been waiting to hear the other side of this story. Oh, Jesus. If you had asked me just a few years ago about my future, I could have never fathomed my life today would be as it is. So strange a path has the twists of fate set upon me that I wake every morning bewildered. And like a small child, I expect everything and everything to happen during each new day. The night my planned future snapped out of joint and took a whole new direction was the night my son Lucas died. I married Dr. Wolfram von Trosserschloss in the spring and we loved each other deeply back then. Oh, oh, very deeply. <laughs> How young we were. He was an educated gentleman from the University of English. And I at first assumed we would get a new flat in Vienna. Or like I called it, Vienna. Instead, he convinced me we should live in my family's old castle and accept our roles as old-fashioned nobility to the little village down the hill. 
We moved into the castle with a staff of 30 servants, beginning the task of breathing life and joy into the majestic halls. At the time, I expected to live out my life as a lady of the household, minding the servants, and indeed, raising children. Before long, our first son was born, and shortly after that, he once again departed. I was devastated, of course, but Lucas had been sickly from his first day, and even though my husband had blocked out the possibility from his mind, I was not entirely surprised when it happened. Nonetheless, it changed us. <coughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up the voice. I have nothing to drink. Ah. Um. I believe Wolfram blames us for what happened. That he thinks it was somehow my fault. He retreated to his laboratory in the old dungeon and started doing unholy experiments and God knows what. Those were dark times. Instead of a household and a child to take care of, now I had no guest, practically no husband, and no child. Everything I thought of would occupy my time was gone, and half all I could do is grieve in solitude. The castle staff left one by one until there was only a handful still here. My existence was meaningless, and I spent my days doing nothing. But I dealt with my grief in my own way, and in time, the claws of melancholy began loosening their grip on me. In so many ways, I have Clara to thank for that. Okay, I'm going to be right back. I need to get a drink. Alright, and we're back. Okay, sorry about that. I, uh, I had to get me uh, a Dr. Pepper here. Jesus Christ, my throat was killing me. Let's just keep looking at the inside of the house here. Uh, to the study. Oh my god. Bookshelves. That's a lot of books. Imagine you had books filled with every possible combination of letters. I wonder how much room they would take. It would take There's a lot. There's a finite amount of letters, but unless we acknowledge a maximum length of a word, there would still be an infinite number of combinations, and the library would have to be infinitely large. I like the way she thinks. Raven. A stuffed raven atop a bust of Pallas Athena. What a cheerful decoration. Let's call them Annabelle and Dupin. <laughs> Globe. Look, a perfect sphere. Let's see if I can get two parallel lines to intersect. Journal page. The doctor's handwriting. I know it well by now. Months have passed, and I must indeed conclude that the procedure was a success. The new Belladonna is certainly calmer, friendlier, and more docile. She gladly keeps me company in the laboratory nowadays, and she is polite and pleasant in everything she does. One is tempted to describe her demeanor as lobotomized, but no. When I ask her a question, she will answer in a clear and articulate voice, and she is responsive to all kinds of stimuli. Verily, I have gotten what I could ask for. That troublesome maid is gone, and Belladonna is back with me, com compliant as ever. Her behavior is exemplary. Our lives are returning to that ideally past, and I thought lost. In all aspects except one. No child giggles in these halls, but my research is proceeding rapidly, and the question presents itself, who needs a womb to create life? I have made an unexpected observation, the side effect of the unliving condition. The household cat, a black beast and once Belladonna's loving pet, has gained a great mistrust for the latter's new form. A disquiet has fallen over the animal, he would not go near the creation. Why is this, I wonder? Why this lack of trust, this sudden and ferocious hatred? Belladonna's appearance seems to be not much unlike what the cat before so fondly gravitated towards, but evidently the beast perceives a difference. As a species, the cat has popularly been associated with witchcraft and mysticism. Their eyes do indeed strike one as remarkable. It is perchance so that the feline oculus is capable of peering into a human soul and spirit, and so when faced with the creation, created Belladonna is distressed by the lack thereof. Hmm. Toy collection. Look at all these old toys. Wind-up dolls, music boxes, and mechanical trains all around. I think this used to be a private hobby of the eccentric Dr. Wolfram's, before he got into the whole corpse business. Hmm, probably, or those were his sons. Typewriter! I should sit down and write a story, but with all these journals and diary pages lying around, it seems like I already may have. <laughs> Alright, I don't really see anything else here. Portrait. Another portrait. It says her name is Francisca Canosa, an old relative, no doubt, but I wonder how she relates to the Von Trauerschloss family. I have no idea. I thought that was the wife for a second. Oh look, it's a cat. What an abhorrent cat. It looks at me with pure hate in its eyes. What 
What's that thing it's playing with? Can I get it? I'm oh, not yeah. going near that horrible cat. I'll have to get rid of it somehow if I want to proceed. Oh, do it. Interesting, but no. Oh. There you go. Interesting, but no. Oh. Oh, we have a bowl. Maybe we need to feed it. I'm oh, not God. Going near that horrible cat. All right. Yeah, maybe we do have to feed it. To the hall. Uh, what's here? To the living room. Oh, God. Journal page. Sheeted furniture. This room looks completely abandoned. I suppose this is what happens when you're down to a skeleton crew of only one maid. No matter how fantastic she is. Hmm. Journal page. Another journal page. This one has drops of blood on it. Belladonna must think, remember. Hands, fingers, write words, words, hate. Hmm. Okay. To the hall, sheet of furniture. This room looks completely okay. abandoned. Window. It's snowing outside. I have no concept of the current year, season, or even geographical location. She's very smart, though. This room reminds me of, um... Uh, let me go back into this room. It reminds me of, um, the, the, the Sweeney Todd. Um... Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it here. Uh, well, I guess we'll do two videos of this. It's getting kind of long. So, uh, thank you everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me here with Belladonna. When we come back, we're gonna continue to look for the place. We're gonna try to get rid of that cat so we can get the ladder and whatever it's playing with. And, uh, there's a door behind it as well. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining me. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out, everybody. Are you living the daydream now? You say you have a shaken faith. Cry and cover up your face. I don't want to watch you.